everyone, <clears throat> it's Ray from Pro String, uh, and today we'll be restringing um, a badminton racket, a Yonex badminton racket, Astrox X7DG. Okay, so it actually says it here, 35 LBS, so this racket can actually go up to 35 pounds of tension. Uh, the client has requested 25 pounds of tension, therefore we're going to go ahead with 25 pounds of tension. And Yonex always recommends to string their rackets with half a pound more on the cross strings. So there you go, rackets on the machine, find your middle, there's always tends to be a little arrow on the top of the racket. Mm. Not all the models have it. Here's another Yonex that I just completed. Um, so, there you have it. Find your middle. Don't apply too much pressure. Remember that. Very important. You can damage the racket in badminton very easily. And it won't take even many strings uh, to, uh, to do so. Um, you, could, you could simply do uh, not even finish the mains. And you may hear a crack uh, just because they're so fragile. So please be very careful. There should be a little bit of uh, moving around area. And today we're going to use Yonex BG66 Ultimax. I'm going to measure up the string so you guys can see it. Typically, you should only need 22. Uh, sorry, 22. That's the mains I was just thinking. Typically, you should only need 13. Uh, I like to leave 13 and a quarter, 13 and a half full lengths of the racket, as you'll see now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and a, well, and a quarter, let's say. Because I know that that gets me, um, gets the job done, and I have a little bit left over, but not excessively. Not, not an excessive amount. There you go. The racket is moving around a little bit, but that's okay. Badminton rackets always starting from the bottom. Always. Find the middle. And always, I always like to put two strings through. And then count, because it's 22 mains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 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 twenty-two. We've already got one main to each side, so therefore uh, eleven minus one is ten. So we're going to count ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold the string, find the other side, and just lightly pull. And leave yourself a little bit, a little bit extra to make sure you re reach your tension head on whichever um, machine you might be using. You should know um, how much you need, give or take. If you're just starting out, it could be a little bit of an experimental process, how much you leave here. But you want to try to minimize the uh, wastage. So, rack is on the machine nicely. We're going to pull the, the uh, clamp upwards and we're going to go ahead and, t and pull our first string and there you have it you should, typically tennis squash and badminton rackets when you pull your first uh string you have a tiny little gap between in this case the tension spreader uh, in other cases it's still a fixture of course um so just uh don't apply much pressure you can see i'm just ever so slightly i'm not putting any pressure on at all i'm just getting rid of the gap which is now it's not there anymore <clears throat> but don't apply much pressure Badminton rackets are very fragile, guys. Very fragile. So be very careful. Cutting myself a nice little sharp edge here to guarantee that string kind of goes through the, the grommets. And the grommets are the little black holes that are within the frame where we pull the strings through. Those are called grommets with a double M. Oh, and as you can see, the string slightly slipped. <coughs> it would seem that I'm losing my voice a little bit 
But anyway, we'll do this one today and then call it a, call it a day. So we're gonna pull three strings to each time, to each side, sorry, until we complete the racket. Three and three. Here we go, we've got three on this side. We're now going to do three on the other side. Just a reminder, guys, this is a Yonex Astrox X7DG. 22 mains, and I'll confirm the crosses now, but if I'm not mistaken, it should be 22. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, excuse me. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Effectively, 22. Sorry for that massive yawn. <laughs> uh, it is uh, quite late. It's 12, quarter past 12, London, UK time. Um, I have three young kids sleeping downstairs, so I wasn't able to start until pretty much midnight, until I got all my little things ready, tripod, camera, and so on and so on. And there you have it, three and three. Our first six mains pull, it doesn't matter which side you decide to carry on with. The important thing is that you do another three, and three, and three, and three, and so on and so on. So this racket, as most Yonex, will finish uh, on a third one, on the 12th. 12 divided by three is four, so four times three uh, bunches or lots of string. And the string, this is a Yonex BG66 Ultimax, and it's slightly thin. A nice thin string if you're a feather uh, a person who use feather uh, shuttle shuttles or shuttle cocks great string to use um, yeah just provides lots of feel touch power uh, nice string we're stringing at 25 pounds of tension guys um, just a reminder if I haven't mentioned yet just to be safe 25 pounds of tension Check your grommets, a little uh, tip or advice, check the grommets. I did this before the video. Uh, it looked all pretty healthy. Um, if you are doing a good amount of badminton rackets, you will notice that from time to time, or actually more than, more than uh, you may imagine, there's cracked and broken grommets, which can be uh, um, detrimental, I guess you could say, or de dangerous in regards to uh, string breakage, even when you're stringing or shortly after using the racket on its, uh, on its uh, first couple occasions. So make sure you keep those grommets nice and fresh. They're not expensive. I mean, I do charge my clients per grommet. I don't see why I need to uh, <laughs> provide them free of charge. It's a service as well. Uh, I do tend to let people know. Uh, however, sometimes I don't. If it's just one or two and I put it into the invoice, um, if they do raise a concern, then I will say, listen, your, your grommets were broken. I do tend to take a picture, keep it on your phone, keep it wherever. In case they do say something, oh, can you prove it? Yeah, if somebody wants to be awkward, which I do see from time to time, not necessarily because of that, but other things, then uh, back yourself up. Might be a good idea if you're running a professional restringing uh, company. Okay, so I've got a hole, a cross hole, cross string hole here. So you guys can see, I will, piece of polyester tennis string. I'm going to place it here, nice and easy, because that will just make my life that little bit easier in regards to getting the string across later on when I'm almost finishing my cross strings, because at the top, badminton is always done bottom to top, do not string a badminton racket from top to bottom. There aren't many that finish at the top. Um, there's a couple Babolats that I can remember off the top of my head. Um, which other rackets? Uh, I can't really think of other ones at the moment. We are just gonna do a one piece today. What does that mean? We're just gonna do two knot, uh, a two knot stringing job, not four. Uh, I've come into the habit to do just a one piece or two knot. If the client requests it, 
Um, I have no problem doing a, a two, a two piece or a four knot. That's completely fine by me. But just for speed purposes and string wastage purposes, um, I do just do two. Tennis, I always do four. Um, four typically does hold the tension better. But tennis is uh, obviously a larger circumference, larger racket uh, face. So I find that strings do that lose tension much quicker on a tennis racket. Um, if they lost tension pretty quick on a badminton, I guess I have a lot of people asking me or requesting uh, a four knot job, which is uh, maybe twice a year. And I, I mean, I do 10, 15 badmintons a racket uh, a week, maybe. Um, depending on the time of year, it tends to slow down in the summer months, June, July, August, September, maybe. But in the winter months, uh, it's definitely uh, high season, I guess you could say, in badminton. So, uh, I've, I've upped the tension on my last uh, main string, as you can see, I've come to the last main, 15%. So I went up from 25 pounds to 28.7, which is exactly, um, um, yeah, what, 25 pounds to 28.7, exactly 15% higher tension on my finishing knot. Here's my finishing knot. I tend to do things a little bit differently. Um, so perhaps other stringers on the start of the crosses on a Yonex racket at least. Uh, as you can notice here, there's lots of holes being covered. And they're not only being covered by one string, um, but they're being covered by a second one as well. I'll try to just, so you can see that's one of the reasons I, I don't pull my knot now. Surely because if I tie my knot now, it's just going to be in the way. Um, so what I do is I'll weave three crosses in a moment, of course, uh, once I finish these two more uh, mains. So I'll weave, I'll weave three crosses just to get the string through nice and easy. And then I'll tighten my knot. Shouldn't really be an issue with this, um, in my opinion, at least. So something that works well for me. I don't know if other people do it, but hey, something that I've discovered. Why have the annoying, uh, annoyingness, let's say, of holes being covered by the main strings, which is quite typical in all racket sports. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so here you go. Three. But we're gonna, so the first cross on most Yonex rackets is the ninth, off of the ninth main string. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just to show you nice and clearly. And there you have it, weaving my first cross. I'm not gonna put it through the knot, of course. Move the knot out of the way. There you go. So as you see, no issues grooving the, the string through the grommet because I've, uh, yeah, I've not tightened the knot, so I'm just trying to avoid a little bit of a, what can sometimes be a small headache, shouldn't be too much of an issue, but anyway, a little system that you know, may work for you, may not, either way is fine. I guess that's sometimes the point of the videos as well, to see how uh, some stringers do things uh, a little bit differently, measuring the string or you know may, whatever it might be. And there you go, it's come through nice and easily. Despite, despite being another shared hole. So I'm going to do one more and then tighten my knot. Ouch. Smash my hand against the shelf. Which is quite close to me, but I don't have all that much space in here. <coughs> I am stringing in my house. Uh, I've got a room dedicated to um, my job. Okay, there you go. Night, uh, night. <laughs> Knot is tightened. Oh, wrong string, my bad. This side, of course, which is the knot side. And there you have it. First cross string pulled. Like I was saying before, if I did mention it, if I haven't, I'll say it again. Uh, for uh, symmetrical, uh, to keep the isometric uh, shape on the Yonex badminton rackets. <coughs> they do re recommend always to go up to five pounds, which is probably 0 0.2 uh, 
uh, of a kilo. And there you go. Three strings pulled. I'm not going to pull that one because I'm going to follow what's called uh, one ahead or one in front. Just to make my life again, just a little bit easier when it comes to weaving the string uh, across like I'm going to do now. It makes it a little bit easier because every time we pull a, uh, a string, it adds more tension to the racket in itself. So if I weave one string ahead, then that should, in theory, make it a bit easier to do your weave. Oh, oh. okay, fine. I oh, went one too many, one too many. <coughs> Excuse me. There seems to be a nasty cough going around again. Seems like it's almost every month at the moment. As soon as you get rid of it, it comes back. Okay, interesting, it went through before, no issues. Um, have a little look, there's loads of space in there, I don't know why it's being stubborn, but anyway. Be careful with the awl. The awl is that little pointy thing that I just used now. That's incredible, that, uh, annoying, seeing that I just did it a moment ago, and it wants to play around there we go but there you go it just shows you a nice sharp angle on the edge of, of your string can do miracles up that tension half a pound again as I was just mentioning a second ago Approaching 12.30 at night, half past midnight almost. And there you go, that slightly slipped off the, uh, the tension head. Being such a, a thin string, I never ha really have a problem with it. It happens time to time, it doesn't really ever happen with uh, tennis or squash strings. But yes, with badminton, every now and again, you might have a little bit of a slide, um, at least on my machine, which is a Wilson Bayardo original, if you haven't uh, yet noticed. but the excess string uh, from the knot. Remember, keep moving that hand and support your string. Don't let it go up and don't push it too hard where it will go down. Reason being, you want to avoid um, tension loss when you finish your job. Instead of straightening up the strings, you want to try to get them as straight as possible when you are stringing. And the reason we move the string up and down like this is to avoid uh, additional fr friction on the strings, which can avoid, uh, which can um, uh, help avoid um, damaging the string. So friction, of course, is what strings, uh, what, what makes strings generally break. Um, 
especially in t uh, tennis. There's a lot more movement of strings due to the different kinds of spins in tennis. Um, top spin to be exact, which of course in, in, uh, in badminton and squash, there is no top spin, it's all flat and pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> but yes, it's, uh, it's good practice anyway to move those strings uh, up and down throughout the rest of the racket. Of course, you'll tend to have less and less space as you approach the end of the racket. <clears throat> so here again, and one ahead. As you can see my weaves, one hand uh, holding two, using both index fingers. One hand above the racket and another below, typically. Um, well, no, actually not typically, I've never really thought about it. Um, is it my right hand always underneath? Or is it my left? So, my left hand's on top now, let's have a look, let's see. Something I've never really thought about. Let's have a look. Again, I just didn't even check now, but I guess if I was doing it like that. So it might alternate between hand above and below the racket. <coughs> Despite having been stringing rackets since I was 12 years old. Um, I'm going to be, well, I'll be 38 this year, so do the maths. So I guess 38 minus 12. 26 years of stringing. So I could already tell that I might not have a, a half a chance to get that through because of the edge or end of the ra uh, string. Okay, man. Oh, it's the worst place ever because I've got this picture in the way. So let's see if I'm going to have some, uh, as you can see, it's a bit tricky. Worst case scenario, I'll have to come in. Come on, I can feel it going, but it's being, nah, no chance, I don't have a chance. So I'm gonna go from this side. go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they all did go through. Hopefully, hopefully that's helped me a little bit. Uh, sometimes when the fixture of the machine's in the way and the string, there you go. <coughs> the fixture of the machine in the way and stuff, it can be a bit tricky. Um, all right, we're not that far away from finishing now, guys. Um, another shared hole, which was the same case. Hopefully, this one is kinder to me than I think it was. Weirdly, just depends how the uh, string is positioned within the grommet, which typically is kind of the same to either side. But anyway, happy that went through easy. I have a cross string here in my way, the main, sorry, covering my cross. Use the all, just pull the string down a little bit, or up, whatever's easiest, the opposite to where, where the string is popping up. I might have that again here. So the idea about um, uploading videos like this is just to give you as much content out there with different types of rackets. Um, 
I know there are videos from other people out there um, explaining things a bit you know, more specific. But my intentions are obviously to give you as much information as possible. Uh, you can always go backwards and forwards once the video is uploaded. Um, but I also have a lot of rackets to string. Um, therefore, uh, not only am I tight on time to uh, get too far into detail, but you know, if it helps you guys, um, even if you're able to see and zoom in on your phone or take screenshots and then zoom in, uh, if there's things that I'm not saying, for example, one, two mains, three, four, five, six, seven mains, and then we skip the eighth for cross, that'll be our last cross, nine mains, skip again, another hole there, another main, so on, yeah, we got, uh, What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, skip one, eight, skip one, nine, skip one, tenth is a shared hole, cross and main, uh, skip one, and eleven is again a shared main and cross. Come on, slip again, for example. So yeah, I have a pretty hectic life um, between uh, family life and stringing, etc. <clears throat> We have a bit of a fluffy edge here. I know that's not going to work. So let's give ourselves a nice sharp edge again. And this looks a bit uh, a bit tricky, this one. I'm just going to put the all through and see if that's kind to me. I think it might be. There we go. Sometimes if you just put the all through the hole, um, it can just give you that tiny bit of, I don't know, space perhaps, I guess. I know that this, oh, here we go. This last thing I wanna do is start really using that all too much. I'm not happy with this. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, is just put the all ever so slightly through. And let's see if that gives me any advantage. It's going to be one of those, I think, where I really, yeah, I'm going to have to, oh, come on, sometimes, just sometimes, it can get a little bit frustrating. through again. All right, come on, be nice to me. Pull down the string. Okay, we're through. But I can tell you, <laughs> there are some rackets out there. Not necessarily this one, that wasn't too bad, but they, you will encounter situations sometimes where you just need to be patient keep cutting that edge because a lot of the times what doesn't allow you to get over um, um, uh, a main string that's covering a cross hole is a lot of the times is your um, angle how you cut your string and I can already see it again however I've got no nothing covering here that should go through but I don't know if you guys can see but it's quite fluffy at the edge or at the end of the string, therefore, that can um, work against you. Right, there you have it guys. Last cross. Last cross string. Up my tension 15%, 15 to 20% recommendable. Clamped my last cross string. Always remember, so you can't see maybe, but the, the clamp isn't touching the frame or the string or the grommet. Very important that you do that as well because sometimes, not sometimes, but always when you release the clamp after tying a knot, it will move a little bit. The last thing you want it to move and start pressing against the frame, uh, which therefore might um, scratch the racket and make it much more difficult to get the string away from uh, the clamp away from the string, which therefore can cause to snap. 
at least with these clamps, uh, especially because um, they have some diamond diamond dust, I believe, on the inside part of the the clamps. So what actually is touching the string? All right, we have it. I'm gonna cut my knot away and take away my little stringing aids, string aids. There we go. And you should be able to take the racket off nice and easily off the machine. If you're struggling to take the racket off the machine, hopefully you haven't done any damage. Um, and if, yeah, like I said, you know, if you have, if you are struggling to take the racket off the machine, that just indicates that you are putting the racket far too tight on the racket. That sounds like music to my ears, even if I say so myself. Great, happy with that. Racket done. Oh, again, straighten up your strings. Try to minimize that uh, by supporting the string when you tension it, as I mentioned. Strings are nice and straight. As you saw, I didn't have to fool around too much with, uh, with straightening them. All right, guys, but there you go. The Yonex Astrox X7DG. All right. Quite like the paint job, actually. Um, it's an older version now. But there you have it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, it was some useful information for you guys there. And happy stringing. And hopefully, we'll... Uh, have you tune in again in one of our next videos. Take care. Bye-bye.